Welcome to Screen Junkies. Summer blockbusters are in full effect. Our good friend of the show, Nick Mundy, has been texting and emailing like a maniac wanting to come on and talk about Man of Steel. And obviously, since the movie's been out for three weeks, spoilers ahead, duh. Nick, apparently, you did not care for this movie. Look, I love Superman. I've been wanting a good Superman my entire life. I've never gotten it. So when Man of Steel was announced, I got excited. And then when the trailers came out, it looked fucking awesome. And then I watched it and it was like, holy shit, this isn't even a Superman movie. I mean, he destroys Metropolis. He murders Zod. And they just ripped off every movie. It went from Terrence Malick to the Avengers to the Matrix. If you want to rip off a movie, why don't you rip off Superman? Christ! All right then, today we have with us an opposing viewpoint, a man who loved the film, a good friend of ours, the writer of Torso, Manhunter, and Captain America comics. Please welcome Mr. Mark Andreco. Hi, Hal. Hi, Mark. So you really liked Man of Steel. I did, I thought it was a very good film. So Mark, can you rebut some of Nick's points? Oh, gladly, gladly. How can you say that this isn't a good Superman movie? He saves people, he gets a great costume, he meets Lois Lane, there's the Daily Planet, all the elements of Superman are in there. It's Superman year one, this is his first mission. And he has to save the planet. Zod's never gonna stop. Killing him is the responsible thing to do. And yes, it does take a part of his soul. We're gonna explore the no-killing Superman in the sequel. Well, maybe he would have learned not to kill if Pa Kent wasn't such a dick in the beginning of the movie. What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? Maybe. He had this cold alien father, and then he had cold alien Kevin Costner father. There was you know, nothing cold and alien about Kevin Costner. Kevin, Kevin Costner in of itself is cold and alien. Well, I mean, I'll give you that, but yeah. in his movie, he was fantastic. Guys, clearly you disagree. Let's get specific now. Nick, you thought there were several plot holes in the movie. Yeah, there were more plot holes in this movie than any movie I've seen in a long time. Okay, they had this world engine that can terraform Earth into Krypton, but if they do that, they would lose their powers. That makes no sense. Why don't you just be king of Earth? If I had, if I had Zod's powers, I would be like, hey, you know what? Fine, we'll just take care of Earth, and it'll be fine, and I'll be king of the mountain. No, actually, actually, you proved my point with why Superman needed to kill Zod, because Zod was going to destroy Earth or be the ruler of it. So Superman had to destroy him to save the people of Earth. Also, if, shut up, Hal. Also, why was Superman's ship, uh, why was Superman's suit in the ship when it was already established that that was 20,000 years later? And speaking of ships, why did Lois have to go up to jor ship? They didn't need it. Was it like, seriously, floor exposition? Because that's the only thing I can figure out. And then also, why does everyone in Smallville know that Clark Kent is Superman? Uh, Hal, can we get some oxygen for him and can I respond to some of that that I remember? <sighs> No oxygen for him, yes, you can respond. First of all, you brought up the thing about people in Smallville knowing who Superman is, which is something I liked. I also liked the fact that Lois Lane knew who he was, because the whole concept of super secret identities is a leftover from the McCarthy era. Oh, yeah, right? okay, because, yeah, secret identities with the NSA aren't needed right now. So, like, yeah, no, that's, that's completely untimely. Yeah, that Jesus, are you auditioning to be Lil Rush Limbaugh for Fox News? Calm the f*** down. The thing that was great about the people of Smallville knowing who Clark was, that's, an, that's a, a quintessentially American moment. They knew who he was. They will never tell anyone outside their community. And Lois knowing who he is, it makes perfect sense because the biggest problem with Lois Lane as a character throughout the history of Superman is she's this Pulitzer Prize winning brilliant fearless investigative journalist and she can't see through a pair of glasses. It makes her a f***ing idiot. Guys, if I could chime in, I found the film to be, among other things, utterly humorless. Damn right. I have to remain impartial. Mark, where do you stand on the tone of the movie? I would rather have it air on the side of humorlessness than on the side of campy, ridiculous crap. I don't disagree with you, you know, I don't want like that shit to exist in a Superman movie either. But the problem was they wanted to Dark Knight Superman. But they're two different characters. Like Superman's about hope, Batman's about fear. It just felt like Dark Knight Rises where everything sucks, Everything's miserable. It doesn't need to be like funny, ha ha, hilarious. It doesn't need to be Tony Stark, but it should be uplifting. Did you feel uplifted after the end of Man of Steel? At least in The Dark Knight, I think they were even more uplifting. Who felt hopeful out of this and at the end of this movie? Wait a minute, you're saying The Dark Knight was hopeful. It was all based on a lie. Okay, we're really starting to digress here. So, a lot of good points, but let me remind both of you, there was one huge funny moment where that girl said, oh, he's hot. I'm just kidding, that wasn't funny. That's because so, it's true. I would kiss Henry Cavill. Let's get back to Superman. Was Man of Steel too dark? Yes, Superman is supposed to be the symbol of hope. The people of Metropolis and Earth never saw Superman as this heroic guy who saved them. Superman saved one person by my count. He told a person in the Smallville fight, hey, go into that IHOP, 
it's not it's dangerous out here then he fucking threw one of the giant kryptonian people into the ihop probably killing him you gotta admit that was some great integration for ihop i mean ihop had more screen time than lawrence fishburne and uh, not to mention nokia vizio uh, and sears and and but that's that's not the point the point is the movie had absolutely no hope whatsoever I think in a lot of ways you need to look at Man of Steel as the first act of a larger movie because there was so much heavy lifting they have to do to re rehabilitate the Superman mythos. I've met no one that thinks Superman was just okay. People either love it or they hate it. The fact that we're having this conversation is proof that they did something right. Guys, some great points. Let's talk sequel. What do we want to see in the next Man of Steel movie? I think Brainiac is what I want to see, and Brainiac and the introduction of Lex Luthor. Uh, it'll be great to see Lex Luthor portrayed as a villain on screen for the first time as opposed to a bumbling fool. Hopefully that's the way they do it, and another way they can set it up, the movie, is like, no one trusts Superman. So they can have Lex Luthor as like this like social media billionaire just run this like shitty campaign against Superman, turning the people of Earth even more against Superman, while Luthor's doing villain shit and then Superman gets hope. That's the only way they could do it. My problem, the problem is, I think they're gonna be like, it made so much money doing it the one way of just the disaster porn that they're just gonna do that and they've been wanting to do Doomsday See, for 20 years. See, but the fact that, the, fact that the, the, the viewing audience for this movie is so split and it's, it's such an extreme divide means I, I think they're gonna actually listen. Because it, it all, Nolan also said he didn't want Superman to kill Zod and originally he, the Snyder had to convince him of that. Which, what the fucking world do we live in where Zack Snyder convinces Christopher Nolan to do something? A world of compromise. Which, gentlemen, I'd like to do here. Let's compromise and agree to disagree. Shake hands. Great listening to both of you guys. Let me ask you, who did you agree with? Who did you vehemently disagree with? And what movie disappointed you the most so far this summer? Let us know in the comments below. Best answer, boys, get the Screen Junkies t-shirt. I want to thank my pals Nick Mundy and Mark Andreco. It's been a wild ride. Thanks for watching Screen Junkies. I'm Hal Rudnick. Bye-bye.